Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, his nurse picked him up and fled. But as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name was Mephibosheth. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, 9, 1 through 7, okay? Verse number, number 1, chapter 9. It says, David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I could show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Hmm, I want to stop right there, but I'm going to be disciplined. Now, there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your servant, he repl- at your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I could show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Mashur, 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 and son of Amiel and Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Mashur and, and Amiel. And when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay homage, to pay honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he, service, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belongs to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. And you will always eat at my table. Today, I want to talk to you from the thought, Dropped, but not forgotten. Dropped, but not forgotten. Dropped, but not forgotten. And we, we, we are all familiar with, with the story of, of Mephibosheth, right? We, we, we understand that, we understand that, 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 that Mephibosheth was, was the son of Jonathan, the grandson of Saul, right? And and at this moment, at this moment, uh, Saul's kingdom was coming to an end. And, 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 and Jonathan, his father, Jonathan, had died in battle. And, and, and the heat was on his grandfather, Saul. So he, he killed himself to prevent from surrendering, right? So he fell on his own sword to keep from, 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 from surrendering to, to, to the Philistines. But, but so, so now... And now the word has gotten back to to the house that 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 Jonathan, Mephibosheth's father, Saul, his grandfather was dead. And because he was a part of that lineage. Right. It was sure that he would be killed also because you don't want to leave any of the lineage because you don't want anyone saying that someone has right to the throne. You don't want anyone coming up saying that you should not be the king because this heir is still alive. So, so without a doubt that, that, that Mephibosheth's life, had it not been for the nurse, was going to come to an end. And so the nurse, right, and, and the scripture says, the scripture says that, that, that he fell. Some say that she dropped him. That he was dropped. And and because he was dropped in her haste to try to save him or get him to safety, he became lame. So he had a lifetime disability based on her efforts to save him. Now, now we can stop right there and think about, well, well, and and, and focus on the disability that he was going to have for the rest of his life. We could we could get hung up on the fact that for the rest of his life that he's either going to walk with a limp or, you know, something have to walk with a cane or no. We can we can focus on the result of her dropping him. Right. We can focus on that and we could talk about how his life will probably never be the same. 
And we can look at Mephibosheth differently because, wow, not only did she hurt one foot, but both of his feet were messed up now. And so the reality of it is, right, she was trying to save him. And so now the rescue mission just now became more difficult. Because he was five years old at the time, so at least, I don't know how far they, they, they had to travel, but at least at five years old, he could walk some. He could, uh, he could uh, assist in this rescue mission. But now that he was dropped immediately, what now she has to carry all the weight, all the burden, all the load for the remainder of how far they have to go. Now, we, 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 we could stop there and we could focus on, woe is me, Mephibosheth. Like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe, I can't, I can't believe that, that a young boy life has been altered for the rest of his life based on the, the, what, what, the, what this nurse did. But that's not the viewpoint I want to look at today. I want to look at, I want to look at the viewpoint of she didn't leave him. Now, 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 the mission just got more difficult because now the little boy can't walk. So now I got to give him hip service all the way to wherever we go. But you know what she made a decision to do? She made a decision to say, you know what? I'm more concerned about saving your life than leaving you where you are. Can I, can, I, can I suggest to somebody that in my mission, in my efforts to try to help save you or get you to safety, I may just drop you. I, I, can I suggest that, 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 that I may not present every I dotted, every T cross. I may not choose the best word to say. I may not present it to you in the very best way. But I am more focused on getting you to safety than letting you die in sin. Because her, her, her whole agenda was, I'm not going to allow him to die where he's at. How many of us get so caught up? Okay, let, 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 let me make it clear, because cause, cause, cause sometimes that, 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 that may not make sense to some people. Because, because I don't want to leave you where you are, I may say some things that you don't agree with. Because I don't want to leave you where you are. I may, not, uh, I may not agree with some things that you're doing, and I'm going to let you know that what you're doing is wrong. And if it's bad enough, I may not have time to make sure I am super elegant. I may, may not have time to make sure I present it the, the right way. I may not have time because there's a sense of urgency of getting you out of this situation that I don't have time to make sure that I think about it and make sure I process what is the very best way that I can present this to Brother Mike to make sure that he completely understands that I'm doing this out of love. I may not have time to do that because I'm focusing on getting you out of this mess. Sometimes we become more focused on not dropping somebody than them laying there dying. The mission becomes, well, I'm not going to do anything because I don't want to drop you. I, I, I'm not going to get involved because I don't want to drop you. I, 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 I see some things because what, what, what you got to understand that this young boy didn't see what she saw. At five years old, I'm not sure that he understood the magnitude of the situation, but she understood it. So he was there not seeing everything that she saw. Sometimes we got to move based on what we see, not what the person sees. Okay. All right. All right. I don't know if that's because you, you don't agree or, or, or if that's one of those things like, ouch. I don't know which one. I don't know what that silence represents. I don't know if that, that silence represents, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't 100% agree with that or that silence represents that, oh, my goodness. Because what we got to, we have to love the person enough that I, okay, let's look at it from a different perspective. The person that has been dropped has to understand that I dropped you not because I wanted to hurt you. My intent was never to hurt you, 
My intent was to get you to safety, but on my way to getting you to safety, I, I, I fumbled. I dropped you, but 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 and 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 there may be some scars left from behind because I dropped you. There there may be some pain associated because I dropped you. There there may be some lifelong disabilities because I dropped you. But what I need you to focus on is that I didn't intend to hurt you. I was trying to love you to safety. I dropped you. I dropped you. I didn't say it right. I, I didn't do it right. Matter of fact, I didn't come prepared. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they had strollers back in that, those days, right? So, so, so I don't know if she forgot to grab the stroller when she was trying to hurry up. And she could have put them in the stroller and it would have been a lot better, right? I don't, I don't know if, if she had one of those things that you know that they wrap you around, wrap around your body and you put the baby on the end. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if they had all of those things back in the day. So, but, but what I do know, that she made a decision that I'm not going to let you die. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Now, 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 if we want to make it, let, 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 let's make this thing a little bit more personal. Because I, 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 sometimes we got to see it in our own house. We got to see it in our own house, right? Because right Right, right now, it's a Bible story. Can I tell you that just maybe your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, and your granddaddy at times have said some things to you that probably made you feel like they just dropped you. They probably said some things in a way that you didn't like it. They probably intentionally hurt your feelings. They probably said some things a little aggressive. And depending upon what generation you came from, they may even have put hands on you. I know that's, you know, you can't. Now, 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 now if you say something about putting hands on somebody, immediately DSS is on the way, right? But, but, but we don't, but, but I hate to say it, but we hear now, but we don't look at the effects of the children when we allow them to do whatever they want to do. You know what I don't understand? This is what I don't understand. Um, I'm really meddling now. This is what I don't understand. We won't allow our kids to eat as much candy as they want. We won't allow our kids to stay up as long as they want. We won't allow our kids to lay out of school when they're small. But we allow them to talk to us any way they want to. We, 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 we won't allow them to, 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 to do, we won't allow them to walk in the street without holding an adult's hand. We won't allow them to cross the street by themselves. We, we won't allow them to go to talk to strangers alone. We won't allow those things because we say those things are dangerous and they could be a detriment to your life and, and health and safety. But we don't realize that not teaching them how to respect authority in the house is a detriment to their health and safety. So we allow them to act any way they want to. I told y'all this just metal. This metal. This this is metal. Um, you, it's on video. So Pastor Ryan go here. He probably watch it right now. So you don't even have to tell him. He gonna know. But I don't understand that. We give them free reign and free course to do whatever they want to. But in the things that we should control, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to scar them. Emotions are real. And I'm not playing down any of those things. Please hear me. But you know what I would much rather do? I would much rather teach my kids discipline the way I know how to teach them discipline from a place of love than for them to be in the streets, right? And someone that's meaner than they are, tougher than they are, right? Don't understand when, 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 when they say, keep talking. And your kids never understood, shut up. <laughs> they don't know what that means. So, so somebody already, hey, keep talking now. And because they've never been taught 
Okay, let me be, be quiet. They've never been taught, be quiet. They keep talking, and now there's a funeral. And now the church house is full of weeping people talking about, I don't know why this happened. Well, if we peel back a lot of layers, we, we, we could go all the way back to four and five-year-olds when, when they ran the house and you never told them to be quiet. You never made them be disciplined. You never told them that you never set any boundaries. This is metal, strictly metal. Because what I want us to understand that we have in the house, I'm not talking about only parents, because at one point in time, we used to live by the idea that a village raised now, you can't say anything to anybody else's kid. That child could be acting a plum fool. And you say, please don't do that. And all of a sudden, mama, grandma, great grandma, everybody coming like, don't you talk to them like that. Like, and then they go to school, act a, act a plum fool. Teacher can't even say, please sit down. Don't you talk to him. You picking on him. You picking on her. You don't like them. As if the teacher went to college. Paid. Got, probably got student loans. Right? Went through all the training necessary only to get the sister Kathy's grandson and daughter just to say, I did all of that, so I won't like you. That makes a whole lot of sense, don't it? It makes a lot of sense, don't it? Like, I went through all of that just so that, that, that for I was waiting my whole career for you to get in the class so I could say, that's the one I've been waiting on, not the light. <laughs> I'm definitely going to pick on you. That, that makes a lot of sense, don't it? And you already know little Johnny act crazy at home. You already know that. Because I used to act, how do I know that? Because I used to act crazy at home. I used to act crazy at home. And, 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 and every now and then, right now, now, depending upon how your grandparents and parents were, you, you, you tone the craziness down when you got to school. Used to. Because we used to be afraid if our parents had to get off work to come down there. It wasn't enough extra money for me to miss hours at work. So if I had to leave work to come check on something at school, you better be hurt bad. <laughs> I'm talking about, look, the paramedics better be in front of the car. <laughs> because if not, the paramedics is going to be following me back home. Because <laughs> <laughs> something, either I was hurt, the reason why they had to come, or I'm hurt is the reason why they're going to have to come. Either way, there's some pain and suffering going on if I had to come to that schoolhouse. Okay. But she understood the mission. Can I tell you that your grandparents, your mama, your daddy probably have said some things to you that, to be real, have left some emotional scars. In some way, you may have to, now as an adult, go talk to somebody about, like, I don't understand why my mama and my daddy yelled at me so much. I don't understand why my, my mom and my daddy, they used to spank me. I don't, maybe you need to go talk to somebody about that. I'm not downplaying that, but what I want you to focus on, don't focus so much on that and, 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 and forget to realize that what they were trying to do, just like this nurse, what they were trying to do was to not allow you to die where you were. Now, every tactic, I'm not co-signing, but what I'm saying is sometimes we get so focused on the wrong thing. We get focused on the lameness, and we don't think about the alternative. The alternative is death. Now, we can look at Mephibosheth and feel, like, feel bad because he's lame, but we also, the story could end right here. Because his life would have been over. Sometimes there's some scars. Sometimes, sometimes leadership is going to say something to you that you may not like. Pastor Ron may say something to you, not in the way that you want it said. 
But, but what we got to do is trust people enough to know that you may see something that I don't see. You may understand something that I don't understand. Uh, it, it, she didn't have time to explain all of that to a five-year-old what's going on. She didn't have time to justify why I'm picking you up and getting you out of here. I just got to do it. And we'll worry about the results when we make it to safety. I'm talking about dropped, but not forgotten. So she, so she takes Mephibosheth and they go and they make it. And she, she's more focused on her safety than her tactics. She's more focused on him surviving than the way to survive. I've never been in in military, I've never been, but I've been in a couple felt like military situations. And uh, if I am with somebody and something is bad happening, and somebody's shooting, right? And you come behind me and you push me down, and I scrape both of my knees, my elbow, and bump my head. And my both my knees bleed, my elbows bleed, and I, I'm leaking from my forehead, right? You know what I'm not focused on? That I'm saying thank you because you saved my life. We get so sometimes we get too focused on I got a scar from you trying to save my life that we forget that you're trying to save my life. Maybe, maybe I should have said in the opening, right, the, the songs were for you to get, you know, your shout and all of that stuff out. So, so do I need since now do we need to replay the song so you can get that out? Okay, okay, all right. I just make you sure, I, you know, because 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 God gave it to me first, so I understand. And 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 then now look at this right here. In verse number nine, in verse number nine, it says uh, chapter no, chapter number nine, verse number one. Um, 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 David says this right here. David asks, "Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake?" For Jonathan's sake. If, if, it, if, 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 if people wouldn't misinterpret this, I, I would tell you to take out your phone and text people in your contact list, you're welcome. I, I, would, I would have you send, I guess, a whole bunch of you welcome texts, right, just so they can say for what? So I can say, because there are some things that you have just because you're associated with me. There's some things that God, there's some doors that God has opened for you only because we connected. Now, I'm not trying to get any accolades. I'm, it's not about credit. But sometimes, sometimes we don't understand that we are reaping a harvest from some seeds that somebody else sowed. So, so what you need to do is you need to check your circle. And you need to check the people that's in your circle and say, would I want to reap your seeds? Do, do, do I want what you putting in the ground in my life? Sometimes you got to look around and see who you're associating yourself with because I got to ask my question, what if, what if you're being a Jonathan in my life that you're sowing some seeds that I had nothing to do with, but I'm going to be able to reap it. Now, I need to make sure that I want to glean from this field. How many times have you looked around and said, you know what, I, I, you put some strife. You put some envy. You put some hate. You put some anger. You, you put some turmoil. You, 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 ah, you, you full of deception. You, you, ah, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want, if, 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 if that's the, if that's the field that God chooses for me to glean from, I don't want that. How many times do we do a, a parameter check and say, who? Who, who, who am I connected to? Who, 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 who am I connected to? Because right now, Mephibosheth has done absolutely nothing. He is about to reap because of what Jonathan done. The relationships that you have today may be setting people up for the future. The way you treat people today may be opening some doors for some people in the future. So be careful how you treat people because it may not come back to you. 
but because I'm connected to you, it may come to me. At this moment right now, the only thing Mephibosheth was, was the only one left. It could have not, it, it very easily could have not been him. Because David was looking for anyone, and I'm going to talk to you also about the, the, the need of to be able to forgive people. Because y'all know Saul was trying to kill him. <laughs> y'all know Saul was trying to kill him, right? Y'all remember that part of the story? And, 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 and David was still, he didn't say, he didn't say, now there was a servant of Saul's household. David asked, is there anyone still left of the household of Saul? How many of us could let that go to the point that, and I know him and Jonathan had an agreement, but how many of us could have let that go to the point that I'm still going to bless? I'm going to still have honor. Just because that's how you act doesn't mean that's how I'm going to act. Just because, just because you have a problem with being jealous, just because you have a problem with, with, with wanting to have all the attention, just because those are your issues don't mean those are my issues. And I'm still going to be a man of God, and I'm still going to look for people of your household to bless. He carries stuff too much. He carries stuff way too much. We... Our memory sometimes is way too long about the wrong stuff. You ask somebody, you, you bring up a name of somebody, and they, if they have done something wrong to, that, to you 30 years ago, and if you're not careful, the, the description that you give of that person now will be what they did to you 30 years ago. Oh, man, you better watch that stuff. He stole something from me. That was 30 years ago. You have no idea the transformation that has been a part of this person's life. You have no idea where that person is now. But the only thing you go back to is what they did to you 30 years ago. We remember stuff too much. And the things that we need to remember, we forget. Ah, be careful. That joker's finger's sticky. 30 years ago. He wronged you 30 years ago. What, what, what if, why if David had that same mindset? What if David had that same mindset? Well, 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 you wronged me. No, but he says, I'm being, I want to be specific about who I show kindness of God to. He says that, is there anyone? I don't care who it is. It could be his great, 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 great cousin. Is there anyone? Mm -hmm. c c cousin, like, fifth time, you know, because, you know, if, if we like somebody well enough, we'll find a way to put them in the family. If we like them well enough, you know you're my cousin. Like, oh, that's cousin such and such. I, no, no, it ain't. Joker's age, no more related to you than I am. But, <laughs> but I like them well enough, or they have a gift that I want to be associated with. Oh, you know my cousin such and such? <laughs> oh, no, I don't. But it could have been anyone. So he's looking for anyone that's a part of Saul's lineage that I want to bless. So he, 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 so uh, Zebra brings up a reminder that, hey, Jonathan is closer than you think. Jonathan has a son. Uh, Jonathan has a son. And then it goes on to say, uh, and he goes to tell David that he's lame on both feet, right? Now, now sometimes, I'm going to just let y'all go behind the, the, the curtain when, when me and God are working on something together. I ask a lot of questions. I do, because sometimes the scripture leaves things to my, it's like, well, what, why was that, why was that necessary? He didn't ask for anybody healthy. 
He didn't ask, he didn't put any qualifiers out there on who it should be. So why was it necessary for you to tell me that he's lame? What's the point in that? These are the kind of questions I ask. Now, I didn't get an answer, so God left it to my imagination. So this is not biblical. Right? This is not in the scripture. But then I start asking myself, was he trying to make sure that David still would want to bless him? Was he trying to see if being lame, because at that time, as a man, as a man, being lame was a very big deal because you couldn't do the things because there was no food lion. There was no Harris Teeter. There wasn't jobs that you were just going to. So as a man, you had to provide. Right. You had to be strong enough. That's why they had so many kids. We had to figure this thing out as as collectively. Right. And so as a as a man, if you had a disability that prevent you from doing those things like th- th- there's a problem with you. So just maybe this is my this is what this is only Johnny. This is not this is not the, the Bible. But just maybe he was like, OK, let me before you show kindness, let me show let me let you know who you about to give this to. How do we try to qualify people as who's worthy? Okay, all right. Well, I guess we don't. I would say uh, the church, I ain't going to say that's a bad place not to tell the truth, but that's a horrible place not to tell the truth. Because we qualify people. We qualify people. We, we, we look at this person and we start to look at either their gifts. Do you know how many people in the house of the Lord today, right, because they have a gift, they will automatically qualify to stand in front of the people. They can sing heaven into the place it seems like. So that qualifies them. Let alone Johnny can't hardly hold a tune but he's a true worshiper. Ain't no way you ever going to touch a mic. But we say we don't qualify people. We qualify. We qualify people every single day. Why, why do you think you go on a job interview? Let me let me make it simple. Why do you think you have a resume? If you don't have a job. Please get your resume together because uh, the days of just going knocking on doors. If you go knock on a business door and say, are you hiring? They may call the police on you. They think you solicited, right? Because people qualify you based on that piece of paper. And then if that piece of paper is good enough, it will qualify you to sit in front of somebody so they could talk to you. We qualify people all the time. So just maybe he was saying, are you sure he's qualified? Let me let you know all the facts. The facts are that he's lame in both feet. I don't want you to get so excited too quickly that that's Jonathan's son. I want you to know the whole story, right? But can I tell you, we are all lame in some way. We're all, we all have some type of disability in some way, right? We're all struggling with something in some way. So if we're going to check our full resume, not what we put on paper, because, you know, we doctor that thing up. Like, you know, we, we make our resume fit the job description. If you smart, you would. I just want you to don't. Keep one resume and keep sending it to everybody. You need to cater your resume. This is just a hiring perspective, if you send me a resume and the job is about being a mechanic and you talk about how well you are a cashier, just know I'm not calling you. <laughs> right? So so uh, I don't know. If anybody don't, don't, don't have a job, I'm helping you right now. Cater your resume to the job because that's what we do. Right? But he wasn't trying to get him qualified. He, they, David wasn't looking for qualifiers. The only qualifier that, that Mephibosheth needed was he was associated with Jonathan. 
The only thing that qualified him was what Jonathan had done years ago. I try to tell you, you need to send somebody some you welcome text. Because there are some things that's happening in people's life is because they are connected to you. More importantly, there are some things that's not happening in people's life because they are connected to you. There are some things that people are not getting that they deserve because you are interceding on their behalf. There are some things that people are supposed to be going through, but God is hearing your prayer and allowing them not to go through it. I'm talking about for Jonathan's sake. I can't tell you that because I can't look. I, have, I don't have the ability to fully confirm this. But I believe that I'm standing before you today because I had praying people. It wasn't about my qualification. I had praying people. There were moments in my life when I was trying my very best to either die or go to hell. Because sometimes they connected. Sometimes trying to die and go to hell is they very similar. Because your actions were either gonna your actions are gonna have you to cause you to die now or spend eternity in hell. If you don't change. So 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 in my effort of trying to go to hell, do, do, do y'all know if we can, can, I, can I go if you have not received Christ in your life, can I tell you? Um, the wages of sin is what? So you're trying to die. Matter of fact, for your actions, I'm going to pay you. You know what wages are, though? If you have, for those who have a job, because I don't know why I was on the resume thing, so maybe somebody that doesn't have a job. If you ever got a paycheck, that's called your wages for the, for the, for, for the time, because we exchange time for money. And based on how talented you are, they value your time more, so they pay you more money. That's how the whole job system works. You get them 40 hours, they say, okay, you are great value, so they're going to give you X amount of money. Uh, you give them 40 hours, and they say, oh, we, can't, we need you, but we can get somebody else to do that same job. They may not give you as much money. So we're exchanging time for wages. So the time that we have on earth, we're exchanging it for a wage. We, are, we either are exchanging it for eternal life or we're exchanging this time we have on earth for hell. Is that too honest? Is that too? Uh, uh, because we just figured out that we exchange time for wages, right? Now, I, 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 I know, I know. Maybe at the very end, um, it won't be a part of the message, but just to make everybody feel good, I will say we're all God's children, but I can't because I'll be lying. Um, but whatever I need to do at the end of church, come to me. I'll try to find something to make you feel better. I'll try, I, I, I'll try my very best, but I can't say I love you. Because if you haven't accepted Christ. You're exchanging your time. Okay, move on, Pastor Jim. But I'm encouraging you that that does not have to be the case. The point I'm trying to make is just like this nurse had a choice, like this nurse, nurse had a choice to either leave this young boy or decide to get him to safety. Today, you know what we're doing if you don't know Christ? If you're not saved, we're trying our very best to get you to safety. That's why we came today. If there's someone in here that don't know Christ, we're trying to get you to safety. Now, in the process of getting you to safety, we may drop you. But what I need you to understand is I dropped you out of love because I'm trying. I was on a mission to save you, help God, get you to God, to get you to Jesus. So if I dropped you, I didn't mean to hurt you. But I, I, realize, I realize that I don't have time to wait. Okay, we, 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 we ending this thing. We ending this thing, okay? So, and then we're going to say something. We're going to play a happy song. Play a happy song. All right, so, and uh, 
Number six, right? We're going to go uh, to number verse number six, right? And, and, and at the end of the day, I said all of that to get to these latter portions right here, okay? When, uh, this is nine, uh, six and seven. Uh, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay homage. So he still, he had, so it's important, right? It's important to understand that you keep your heart pure, right? No doubt, no doubt, he had no real idea as to why he was being called. But he still honored the man of God. Still honored him. Now, now, the scripture doesn't say how long, how much time has passed. But we do know that he was five years old when this happened to him. Right? So keep that in mind. So he, 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 he bowed down to pay honor to David. And David said, Mephibosheth, he says, at your servant, he replied. He said, don't be afraid, David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, not because of you, has nothing to do with you. I want you to understand this. I don't know you. I don't know you, but I knew your dad. And I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. Forgiveness. Not holding a grudge. I'm going to give back to the lineage of Saul what was his. And you will always eat at my table. Today I've been talking about drop, but not forgotten. Sometimes in life, sometimes in life, we're going to have moments to where it seems as if I've been dropped. It's going to seem as if the scars are the only thing that I can see from being dropped. It's going to seem as if being lame, being disabled is the most important thing that's in my life because I was dropped. And because I was dropped, there were consequences of me being dropped. I was hurt. It's okay to say that hurt me. But what, as I've said over and over again in this service, is what, what we can't do is forget the purpose of why you hurt. We can't allow the reason of why you hurt me to get lost in the fact that it did hurt. If I'm trying to help you just like this nurse did, had this nurse had, had forgotten about him and said, you know what, I'm going to save myself. Had this nurse said, because the fact that there she was in haste, just maybe, the enemy was closer than we think. Maybe that's why she didn't have time to get everything together because the enemy was real close. And in her haste, she dropped him. But what would have happened? This day would have never came to pass had she only thought about what she did to him and said, well, you're hurting, so there's no reason for me to continue the mission. I dropped you. You're hurt, so now I'm going to leave you. I dropped you. You're hurt, so now I'm going to forget about you. What I'm trying to say is just because I drop you doesn't mean I forgot about you. Just because I hurt you doesn't mean I'm going to leave you wherever I dropped you at. And what we got to get able to do is to go back and say, you know what? I may have dropped you right there, but I don't want to leave this like this. I, you know what? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like how this feels. Matter of fact, I don't, want, I don't like the fact that be, the, what, 
the fact that I dropped you is going to not only alter your life, but it's going to alter your eternity. How many times have we, do we hear the term of, you know, I was church, 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 church. But, but I wonder if, if, if we would have just went back and said, you know what? I was wrong. Or I, I'm sorry. Because sorry is not connected to right or wrong. I know a lot of times we want to associate sorry with being wrong. Well, I'm going to say I'm sorry because I was wrong. But can I tell you sorry is not associated to right or wrong? Sometimes sorry is only associated with mending the relationship. Sorry is a, a, a ointment that I'm putting on this fractured relationship that we have. And what this nurse did was she said, yes, I dropped you, but my goal was to get you to safety. How many people in our life, that's the goal? That's the goal. And I'm closing with this. Sometimes. The issue that we have, we feel as if it disqualifies us. But can I tell you that there's still a seat at the table for you? The very thing that you think disqualifies you, right? The very thing. It has nothing to do with your seat at the master's table. God has not forgotten about you in spite of you. God still has a place for you knowing that you have a disability. And whatever the reason that whatever the reason that caused that disability doesn't matter. Who caused that disability doesn't matter. David never said who did this to you. David never asked the question because it doesn't matter. What the only thing that matters is you have a seat at the table now. Now, if you continue to read on the story, like, because it's a great place that Mephibosheth is in right now. But he goes through some turmoil after this. But you know what? He never does. He never, ever stops honoring David. He never stops honoring David. Every now and then, the, the conclusion to this is that we are human. We are people. As Bishop would say, I'm, I'm spiritual having a human experience. Meaning I am a spirit, but my humanness every now and then may, may cause me to drop you. But if I'm committed to not leaving you where I dropped you. But what I also need you to do is be committed to understanding why I dropped you. I didn't drop you to hurt you. The hurt was just a result of me dropping you. But I didn't intend to hurt you. What I was trying to do is to get you to Jesus. And in my effort of getting you to Jesus, I may say some things that you don't like. In my effort to get you to Jesus, I may verbalize my disagreements with what you're doing. In my effort to get you to Jesus, I may say that I can't co-sign that. In my effort to get you to Jesus, sometimes it's going to feel like I dropped you. And when I say I, I'm only speaking about myself, but that I is every person in the sanctuary. If you're committed to getting people to Christ, someone at some point is going to feel like you dropped me. But if you're on the receiving end of being dropped, understand that the purpose was never to hurt you. But the purpose was to not to allow you to die where you are. Because if you die where you are, you will never ever sit at the table. 
that's already prepared for you. And I don't want to miss out on sitting at the table that God has prepared for me. Amen? Amen. I pray today that uh, somewhere in this message was a blessing to you. Um, um, and if you felt like I dropped you today, come talk to me. We can talk through it. Amen? Well, um, it's offering time. Yes, yes, yes. It's offering time. Let's say that again. That was some that was some patty cake clapping right there. Let's try that again. Uh, it's offering time. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, um, a tithe is a tenth of, of what God has blessed you with. Um, if you need an envelope, if you raise your hands, our wonderful ushers will make sure that you get one. If you have your offering prepared at this time, you can bring it. And we will say thank you for your uh, for your giving.